All right, you guys, welcome back to some more Fruit of Grisaya. Really enjoyed that conversation with Makina last episode. I think that was really nice. Uh, I liked the way they did that. I liked the conversation. It was just all around a great time. So that, that was nice for a character who's typically been kind of scared of us and hasn't really said much before. Anyways, in the time-honored traditions of America, oh boy... Bright red cars are called pony cars because of the reputation as playthings for schoolboys. While yellow models are jackass cars because only morons drive them. A certain G German woman I know, whether aware of that or not, deli deliberately drives a particularly flashy yellow vehicle around. Apparently she very much enjoys the compliments she gets from her colleagues at work. Usually some variation of it really suits you. <laughs> In other words, a stupid car like that is just about right for a dumb blonde. But she hasn't caught on to the fact that she's being mocked. I've tactfully decided not to inform her either. Just like with women who get flattered when someone tells them, your dress does wonders for your figure, it's pretty tough to let her know the fact that she's not really being complimented. But sometimes things like this can come back to bite you when you least expect it. Hmm? <laughs> Don't know her. I don't have any bimbos among my acquaintances. <laughs> oh, that was gold, considering the dialogue he just was mentioning. So apparently we know an older woman. Like, is this implying that we ourselves are a little bit older than we're letting on? Told you I don't know her. Probably selling Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. Either way, better not get too close. Let's get out of here. Howdy, JB. Apparently, Justin Bieber is a blonde woman now. Uh, what is that woman thinking? I'll explain later, but sorry. Go on ahead. I feel like loan sharks come up a lot in visual novels for some reason. Are they really that popular in Japan? Who's my guardian, or rather my guarantor? It's fine. Hurry up and take Makina back. I'll be right behind you. I'm just gonna say a quick hello. Uh, uh. Apparently not enjoying the way I'm shooing her off with my hands like a stray dog, Amane walks away with a sulky expression, shooting repeated glances over her shoulder. After watching Amani and Makina disappear past the school gate, I screw up an irritated expression, scratching my head vigorously and approach the blindingly yellow bimbo mobile. <laughs> Clearly, he's very fond of her. Look, woman. Whoa, Yuji. We don't talk to girls like that anymore. Enjoying your school life? Yeah, more or less. You enjoy pretending to be my guardian. No idea who that is. What did you come here for? Although I'm grateful you're acting as a guarantor of my background. I don't need a guardian at my age. Kindly get lost. If you think you can shut me up by bringing up my childhood, you've got another thing coming. I'll repeat the question. What did you come here for? If it's about work, I thought I had a break for the moment. It's no problem at present. If you forced me to come up with one, you being here would be the top of the list. It's going to be a pain in the ass to make up an excuse when I go back to the classroom. Don't increase my workload. I prefer to avoid lying outright where possible. Lies are like colors. The more you pile up, the blacker things get. Hmm. I actually kind of like that line. That's interesting. Get enough of that place and things just 
turned just as black. So Waiting an accidental death. I don't need you to tell me that I'm handling this myself, which is precisely why I don't need you giving me surprises like this. I feel like the people that know what's going on in the story already are probably laughing at me because I have no idea what's going on. I'm just assuming we have some kind of possible military background, like a some kind of special agency. I have I have no idea. Are you serious? You really did just come to see me. So Alright, the cell phone. Sorry, I'll make sure to keep it around from now on. こちらからの呼び出しに対して15分以上返答がなかった場合、逃亡と見なして何人か送りつけるわよ。わかってる？ あ、思い出した。あなたこの街に来るとき歩いて検査会を超えたでしょ。ちゃんと電車のチケット用意してあげたのに。何やってんのよ。I hate trains as you know. Also the walk was closer to 175 kilometers. Okay, well then stop making it true. Some kind of psychic. How did you read my thoughts? <laughs> no, look, I do feel bad about that. I'll apologize nice and slowly over dinner next time, okay? So please leave. Understood. Orders received, Major Harudera. <laughs> I don't get the reference. I'm sure he does, though. Stop saying, can I hit this guy just once with your eyes? <laughs> Please don't start around to pain the ass to have to bend a spoon every time I introduce myself. <laughs> I do understand. Don't mind my jokes. Okay. So whatever organization he's in raised him, essentially. Okay. So he's been probably trained since he was a young child to perform certain tasks for them. Okay. I get that a lot. Hurry up and get going. You don't have time to play around here either, do you? You're right. My bad, JB. Yeah. Wow, okay. Wrapping up the engine a little bit, are we? Watch as JB turns away and climbs into her car, her blonde hair swinging behind her in waves. As she drives off, I retrieve a cell phone from my school bag. Although I pretended otherwise, I've been carrying my work phone around just as ordered. <laughs> so was he doing that just to screw with her? I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been carrying that thing around the whole time. I just wanted to, to mess with you. The black low-profile slide phone I received from JB specifically for company business. Slide the screen up quickly and put the lock pin and call up the menu screen. Though it looks like a perfectly normal cell phone, any calls made from this machine pass through a special encrypted line. It's only one entry in the contacts. That single number is listed under JB, Julia Bardera. Okay, so he he mentioned uh, Dara earlier, trying to. I'm trying to understand the reference here. Harudera, okay. Naturalized name Harudera Yuria. Okay, okay, now we understand the reference. Harudera Yuria. My direct superior, 
my direct supervisor at my part-time job. Oh, this is just a part-time job. They raised him, but it's a part-time job. Okay. If you're gonna come, at least give me an advance warning. Click my tongue in irritation, slide the phone shut, and stuff it in my pocket of my uniform so I can respond instantly to any future contact. Odera Yuria, alias JB, as the woman uh, said herself, she's something of a pain in the ass. To go nearly half a year without a single call, and then suddenly it's a... Oh gosh. Ruske standing by in the designated point. Where, of course, she has some incredibly troublesome job waiting to push on me. So it's almost better when there's actually a job. Sometimes she leaves me at the rendezvous point for more than an hour without any contact. Then when I finally get the call, I've been sitting around waiting for it. It's a current situation resolved, and I go right back home again. So we're kind of like a standby agent, I guess. Hmm. I do get a travel fee deposit in my account just for heading to the standby point. So I suppose it's not a complete full errand in that sense, but... Sometimes I can't help but feel like my time on the surf isn't being spent efficiently. Something of a behind-the-scenes part-time job, and the work would be troublesome to explain to others if they asked. Of course, it's not the kind of job I can just casually quit when I want to. More importantly, this is a position I inherited from my master. Okay, so I'm guessing we are raised as kind of an apprentice to take on a role? Wouldn't walk away even if I could. Well then, how should I explain this to a money company? I don't think I'll be able to pass her off as a cookie peddler after all. Pass through Mihama's Academy School Gate. Dragging myself along on heavy feet. <laughs> as expected, the instant I show my face in the classroom, Mane jumps all over me. Most of my classmates are gathered on the far side of the room, apparently having watched from the window as I enter. They're all looking at me with questions in their eyes. Blondie? Naturally, Amani is the one who steps forward to interrogate me, as if declaring herself the representative of the class. That said, the rest of the group doesn't seem to be disinterested either. Makina stares, staring at me with a dazed expression, and Sachi's clutching her hands together in front of her chest, waiting for my words with bated breath. As for Michiru, for some reason she's glaring at me like I kicked her puppy. Sakaki, on the other hand, is sitting primarily, primarily in her seat, reading a book, as if to announce she's above such things, but... Judging from the way she hasn't turned the page once since I came in, we probably got her attention as well. I told you already, didn't I? She's my superior for my part-time job. Yeah, I lost both my parents when I was a kid, so I have to earn my own living expenses. A little difficult to summarize, but well, I get rid of garbage or crawl into various places and take care of the cleaning. It's what you call dirty work. Uh, so, That's right, but she's on the management side, so she doesn't get her hands dirty. Hey, JB. JB? Her real name is Harudera Yuria. JB's a pet name. She's a naturalized citizen. I think she's originally German. Don't really remember. Pull out the chair from my seat and drop my bag on the, off on the desk with a deliberately loud thump. Questioning over now. If you're satisfied with your curiosity, then go sit down. Class is going to start. Just as I speak, the first bell rings and Makina and Sachi scurry back to their seats. But the large woman has been interrogating me. Her expression still smoldering with irritation. Pulls out the chair from the seat in front of me and sits down heavily. Hey, yuji -kun. What? Spit it out then. Uh, I would imagine she's quite a bit older than us. <laughs> That's your big question? What a joke. <laughs> Don't stick your nose in my face. <laughs> You've got a mustache starting there. <laughs> Yeah, just screwing with you. <laughs> Sounds fun, give it a try. Amani's punch is slow, lacking serious intent. I dodge it easily with a slight swaying movement of my upper body. I think this over calmly. Do I look like a man who could be in a relationship? Ani stares into my eyes as if searching for the truth. 
Don't worry about my connection with her. What we do in private is our own business. What is? He was fucking bitches. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this question finally came up. On paper, I was studying abroad in Canada or some similar lie when they came up uh, with my forged personal history, but if they start pushing to that story, that will just drag on. Answering somewhat honestly now should make for less trouble down the line. Before I came here, I guess I was a freeloader of sorts. Himo? Yes, a freeloader. If you want to make it sound fancy, or maybe a gigolo, I was being supported by an unrelated older woman. No, she's a friend of the other woman. I started mooching off of her the, after the first one died. <laughs> In exchange, she worked me brutally hard on the job. She didn't have anything to complain about. <sighs> Bonnie shuts her eyes, slaps her hand on her forehead, and heaves a heavy sigh. <laughs> right. I'll admit, I don't quite understand why that's the main point here, but I guess the stuff is on her mind of girls at this... I guess the stuff is on the mind of girls at this stage. If you try to force your perspective onto everything, you lose sight of the bigger picture. Although she doesn't look entirely satisfied by my obedient response, Amani mutters a brief, well, All right, rises from the chair and heads off to her own seat. I watch until she finally sits down, then quickly turns to look behind me. I have a feeling that most of the people that talk to Yuji, like, always end up disappointed after their conversation because he doesn't quite give them what they want. Like, they were really curious about the whole blonde girl thing, and it just didn't quite go the way they imagined. Immediately behind me, I find a bright red Mitra staring back at me. Honestly, Mitra looks like the daughter of JP. <laughs> like, if I had to say there was a connection, I mean, that's it. But probably because of the the bright blonde hair, which my understanding was that this is dyed, right? Am I remembering that correctly? Are you listening? No, but... Uh, I love how, her, like, 2D her personality is. Pressing her arms tightly in front of her chest, her face bright red, Michiru babbles frantically. In response, I thrust out my right hand and an energetic thumbs up. Nice tsundere, Michiru. You don't want to talk about something, you should make it awkward to ask on that theory. I tried spicing things up a little bit more than the reality, but who knows how much of it they believed. Of course, it's true that my parents died when I was still a kid, that I was picked up by an older woman, my master, that I lived off the money she earned. After my master's death, I did get work from her friend JB in order to earn my keep. On top of that, it's thanks to her vouching for me that I'm able to pretend a... or I'm able to... I'm able to attend a normal school like this in the first place. Now that I think about it, I didn't change the facts much at all. But then the more you focus on constructing believable lies, the less they tend to work. When you stick more or less to the truth, you'll end up convincing people no matter how absurd the story sounds. Well, I've heard the best lies are truths that are kind of blended a little bit. You're kind of like telling most of the truth, so it sounds believable. When you say it, it'll sound believable, but you're kind of bending it. Um, towards whatever agenda you have. Like, that's how you lie really well. Promising start would be a bit of an overstatement, but I think I can work with this. I think so far, the character I want to get to know better would probably be me, True. Because it's clear to me that, like, she has a certain personality that she's kind of putting on a facade. I mean, that's kind of what they've said so far. I just want to know more about why she does that and kind of like what her situation is. Like I, I kind of want a Machina by the by the pond moment with her. So I'm hoping either this episode or the next few will get something like that. I mean all the characters seem like they kind of have this facade going on about their personality. Like they have like this deeper um, story to them. That makes me want to get to know them better. 
I mean, as do we. I mean, the main character himself obviously is putting on a facade. I, I, everyone kind of seems like they're being a little bit fake, and I want to, I want to get to know the real them. As soon as the lecturer leaves the classroom, Mitria slumps forward onto her desk. I've only gotten through two periods. Are you out of stamina already? So I want to know though, if her hair is dyed, like, is she ever going to dye it back? Am I going to be able to see her, like, with normal hair? <laughs> and not twin tails? うん、そうそう。料理の時いつのここだけ使い道がなくて困るのよね。てこれ。キャベツの芯じゃないの。え、何これって日頃から小便の芯とか消しゴムを差しから借りてる。私への<笑><笑> quite the imaginative leap and logic there. <laughs> Sachi hands me through a new lead for a mechanical pencil. So hold up, does Sachi just carry an actual block of lead? Honestly, I feel like that's a lot. I'm just impressed that Yumiko actually joined the conversation. She's been pretty absent so far. <laughs> I think all that courage went out the window. Way to prove her right. A loser leaves? What is that? Ah, oh, okay. A loose leaf notebook. Damn it, what was the other game that I played that had some mention of a loose leaf notebook and I had like no idea what that was supposed to be? Was it, um, uh, Chrono Clock? Was it Chrono Clock where they talked about that? I can't remember. There's a lot of sounds going on right now and I'm really confused. <laughs> Is she saying, uh, grazie? Like, the, uh, like saying thank you in Italian? Oh. <laughs> Hey, yo. Hold up, what? I'm willing to bet she saw some spy movie yesterday. But anyways, you've got you've really got the work, Sachi. Is it bad that like ever since that conversation of Akina, that maybe this will change, but like she's kind of like become one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I just really liked that conversation. It was nice getting to see like a more vulnerable side of her. And then she was talking about how she's an idiot. And I'm like, I relate to that. <laughs> what? You're a unique one. Thank you very much. I think being unique is a compliment. Let's see, do you have a chisel on hand as well? As soon as I request it, a chisel set emerges from the depths of her desk. How about a heavy duty stapler that can handle dozens of sheets of paper at once? Standing from her desk, Sachi walks off to face a large locker in the back of the classroom. What's with that locker? It's twice the size of the others. It's got a whole warehouse in there. Within a few minutes, she finds the requested item and brings it to me. 
probably expect to have to go to a stationary store to get something like this. Hold on to what? I'm just expecting the next thing for him to ask, and that she'll have it, is a pallet jack. We'll find out that Sachi is actually forklift certified. Are you saying her karate chops, uh, chop cuts sharper than a folding blade? So either she's really prepared, or she's autistic. Well, considering her parents' skill and devotion, I suppose she's well prepared to deal with most requests. Also, I hope nobody takes offense to me saying that. I'm not meaning it offensive. I'm just saying that usually autistic people are very well prepared and uh, very knowledgeable. I mean, I've had a lot of close friends that are autistic. Uh, maybe even some family members that are. So I say that with love. I'm not saying it to be offensive. And everybody in this visual novel gives me this idea of of being a little unique. <laughs> oh no, the AC. So jealous that my wife gets to go to Japan. I want to go to Japan and like see how the the summers are there, because they always say like the summer is like blistering hot, you know. And I'd like to experience it, because I mean I've lived in the South here in the United States, and it gets really hot and humid. So I want to know is it kind of similar or is it worse? Because I I couldn't imagine it being worse than than some of the the Southern states here. They're pretty bad. <laughs> So hold up, when is this supposed to be? Okay, so there's a proverb behind it. Yeah, I was confused. I'm like, didn't they just say that it was a... Uh... A blistering summer day, and then now they were talking about it's cold. I'm like, what do you mean it's cold? Oh, <laughs> うん、<笑> まさかだって私もマキナも冗談で言ってただけなのよ。うーん。いきなりやるって言っても、きっとできっこないし。私の耳には分かりましたってうなずいたように聞こえたけど。This is slowly going to turn into Eden of the East. She's going to be like noblesse oblige. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe she's from nobility, and she feels obligated to do something. Mm. Yeah, like, where the hell did she get all this? I don't know, I like to have things that are traditionally, like, 
for certain times of the year. Uh, like with my coffee, I I use a pumpkin syrup, like a pumpkin spice syrup, and I I don't know if that makes me weird, because I'm like I I use that all year round. I don't care if it's fall or not. I love pumpkin flavor. Okay. Um, I like cold drinks in the winter, or ice cream. Like I'll I'll drink a milkshake in the middle of winter. I don't I don't care. It's good. Uh, what's something traditionally? For, for summer, I mean, I don't really drink a lot of hot things anymore, so I guess I wouldn't probably do a hot drink in the summer. But I like, I like a soup in the summer. I'll, I'll eat a soup. I'll, I'll eat a hot soup, sure. So, Makina ga okashi iretari suru kara. Saigo wa kete mono nabe ni natte ta kiga suru kedo. Wait, you were throwing candy in the hot pot? Wait, what? Te kora. Yeah, guys, come on, let me true tell the story. Incidentally, if I said I want a nabe right now, would you be able to prepare things like you did before? The small nod Sashi moves her gaze to the locker behind us. I see, it seems like you really uh, might be more versatile than a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, Alright, Sachi, let's change things up this time. Get together the ingredients for flowing soman noodles. Hmm, an instantaneous response even here. I have to test this for myself immediately. Not a problem, I really do want to try this. I don't know what flowing salmon is. I'm gonna have to look that up. You said it yourself earlier, didn't you? It's hot today, so I thought a cool meal would be best. Oh no, it's the dots. Did we just skip an H scene? It looks about right. A careful check of the bamboo flume that makes up the small canal confirmed the water's flowing speed. Oh, it's like the noodles that like come down the bamboo. Oh yeah, I've seen this. This looks really cool. Uh, unfortunately, I probably can't eat most of the noodles that they have in Japan. Uh, I can't do gluten, so I won't ever get to try it because that would literally make me sick. But it looks really cool, and my wife loves noodles, so I would watch her eat it for sure. I explained the gist of things to the others. I spent the last two periods obtaining the necessary materials and putting together a simple angled bamboo gutter on the roof. Oh, a few minutes after lunch break begins, my classmates, excluding Sachi, emerge. Hey, we don't question good things here, okay? We're grateful, and it ends at that. We say itadakimasu, we eat it. Yeah, there's a bamboo grove with him walking distance in the direction of the mountains, so the materials weren't hard to come by. Is there just, like, random bamboo growing in Japan? Like, how come we don't have that here in America? What is this? Maybe the first time I've skipped class, come to think of it. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Also, I used Mosu bamboo for this thing, but when you're looking to make more intricate goods like a hamper or a strainer, more flexible Madadake bamboo is better suited to the job. If you can tell if you can tell the difference between the two, it'll come in handy when you're trying to live off the mountains. Keep it up in mind. Yeah. Keep it in mind. You never know. So Sachi joins us carrying a large tote bag on her shoulder. Looks like you were able to find what you needed. 
So let's start preparing for the meal. ここが待っているようだから私はここにするわ。とか言って本当は楽しみにしてるから一番上流なんでしょ。うん。は、流しましょうか。そ、それはやめておこう。ほら、カッターの歯食べたら喉切れちゃうかもしれないし。ええか、
ほら小峰さん手が止まってるわよあすみませんユミコは何をするのかと思えば屋上で流しそうめんとはね。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。ねえ。I like how she's cool with it, though. I mean, the school kind of gives me the vibe of、uh, one of those schools where they kind of like do activities. Like, it's not so much necessarily like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not so much just like sitting there and studying, but actually like getting hands on experience with things in life, which I, I really like. I'm trying to remember what those are called. There's like a certain kind of school. Um... Sorry, let me think for a second. Gosh, I know what they're called too. I always get the name wrong. My wife always has to correct me.、Uh, if I think of it, I'll, I'll mention it. But、uh, usually, like, they're for younger kids, but I think they can go into some older grades. But they just kind of teach you to, like, think in different ways to be more, like, creative than necessarily, like, book smart. It takes about three days to get a cat to take to you. The girl named Irisu Makine. Makina. I always want to call her Makine for some reason. Makina got attached to me even faster than that. Yes, this is the same Makina used to flee the instant she laid eyes on me. I have no idea what changed her mind, but lately it's been quite the opposite with her approaching me on sight. I like to think that we made some effort to kind of approach her and to get to know her, I guess, more so than other people.、Uh, obviously,、uh, other people have managed to get close to her, but I think we did it pretty quickly.、Um, From that conversation we had before. Yeah, true. Not that she's particularly talkative after a small greeting, she tends to just tag along in silence. You want something? Honestly speaking, getting followed around for no reason like this is a little annoying. That said, there's no reason for me to coldly shoo her away either. You don't need to go to afternoon class. I see. In other words, she's probably just bored. The schedule at the school is divided between the core curriculum in the morning and optional courses in the afternoon. It's not rare for a few of my classmates to be lazing around by the vending machines after lunch. You've got nothing to do, how about going back to the dorm and studying? That's what I'd like to say, but come to think of it, I'm also wandering around wasting my free fifth period. So I don't exactly have the right to lecture, Makina. I want something to drink. I stick my hand around my pocket, searching for small change. Holding out the right palm toward me to declare it's fine, Makina takes out something that looks like a green stuffed animal from her pocket. The vaguely frog shaped thing seems to be a purse as its red mouth opens wide with a snap of metal bearings. After taking out a few coins, Makina buys a juice box from one of the vending machines lined up in the passage, then returns to my side. Pulling the attached straw free with stubby, clumsy looking fingers, Makina pierces into the juice box and starts to slurp up the contents. Certainly, I drink quietly from my paper cup full of oolong tea. <sighs> True. Now we're repeating ourselves. Probably evidence that we're both puzzled over how to get a conversation started. Who is it that told me the man has to break the ice in situations like this? Of course, I'm not confident I could pull that off if I tried. What do I talk about with a girl like Makina? Stories.、Mm, stories. It's a fairly standard request, but I'm not sure where to go with this. What sort of story? A cool story.、Mm, that's a bit tricky. When you're looking for a chilling tale, I think ghost stories are the standard choice. Fortunately, I'm not lacking in that department, a legacy of, of the time I spent at my old school. Alright then, this is something I heard from an upperclassman in my previous school. Alright then, this is something I heard from an upperclassman in my previous school. This is the story of an American soldier who found himself on a southern island in a night flooded with lukewarm rain. Sounds a little dark for Machina, but sure. 
The soldier was making his way south through the darkened jungle, amid the pelting downpour, following a native trail with eight companions. Their objective was an enemy anti-aircraft position. The rain had been falling for two days straight, leaving the ground swampy as a paddy field, with the moon hidden by thick storm clouds. The soldiers couldn't even see the back of their comrade walking two or three meters ahead. The squad's nerves were already worn by the suggestive darkness of the night's jungle, but the relentless rain piercing through the tree canopy was slowly sapping their endurance as well, and on top of it, the rough map they would received from the scouts were vague to the point of uselessness, good for little but fueling their anxiety. As the squad trudged on, t on it, on at a virtual crawl through the knee-deep mud, it was inevitable that their formation grew increasingly loose. So the American soldier, a sniper bringing up the rear of the column, was desperately struggling to avoid getting separated from the rest of the unit. Eventually, he heard a distinctive clacking from some distance in front of him, rising above the sound of the rain. He recognized the sound as the castanets the platoon leader carried as a means to communicate at night, or in poor visibility conditions where hand signals were impractical. The number of times he clacked Black indicated an order to halt on the spot. The man dropped one knee in the muddy water, grasped his rifle to his breast, and removed the lens cap from his scope, shielding it from the rain. Then a man bush. Lying flat on the spot, the man pressed his strong eye against the gun's sights. The back of the shoulder soldier in front of him came into view. No shots have been fired as of yet. Earlier, reconnaissance had indicated that there were barely any enemy troops or armed guerrillas in this area. If there were enemies here, the odds were that they would be scouts, most likely a fairly small group. The man rested his chin in the muddy waters to watch the jungle ahead. He heard the first sounds of gunfire. Then he wasn't even 30 meters away from his squad. They practically bumped into each other. Six lines of fire from an enemy position. Just as he had thought, it seemed to be a small scouting group. Judging from the reckless way they opened fire blindly, they were probably poorly trained guerrillas who panicked after encountering their enemy under these unusual conditions. Removing his gaze from the scope, the man grasped his weapon and pulled back the bolt handle, pushing a 7.62mm bullet into the exposed chamber and he quickly returned his dominant eye to the eye cup of his sight. The muzzle flashes visible through the scope burned white after images into his pupil. Fully dilated after his long walk into the darkness, he couldn't see the enemy. Aiming on intuition, he squeezed the trigger. Momentary explosion of light from his gun, and he heard an enemy's grunt from the bush some 30 meters away. A hit. Man took his rifle in both hands and began to crawl on his elbows and knees in search of a new firing position. After moving about 10 meters to his left, he discovered a convenient foxhole that would serve his purpose nicely. When he swung his body down into the hole, he found that it was half full of stagnant water, just as he expected, but that fact barely registered in his mind. More importantly, from a position like this, he could snipe well hidden for a time. Sunk to the waist of the muddy water, he mechanically pulled back his rifle bolt and squeezed the trigger. Again, and again, and again. All of a sudden, he heard a voice from the next foxhole, since one had been occupied. Hey, give me a grenade. The response the man took a M67 grenade from the belt slung around his waist and held it out. Safety pin still fixed in place. White hand reached out from the nearby trench and received it. Thank you. The man was certain he heard those words, but no matter how long the man waited, his comrade didn't throw the grenade. Maybe the safety pin was bent somehow and he couldn't get it loose. Hey, you okay? As the man was speaking those words, he started to move his head to look above the edge of the, his encampment. At that moment, the grenade exploded in the next box, so... An explosion of point-blank range isn't something you hear. The overpowering waves of sound aren't recognized by ears as noise. Mass of burning air struck the man like a wall, knocking the helmet off his head and thrusting his body backwards into the muddy pool. His mouth, thrown open by the explosion, was instantly filled with filthy water. As the man desperately tried to spit it out, he realized his tongue had been knocked back into his throat. He couldn't breathe. Quickly thrusting his hands into his mouth, the man peeled his tongue free with his fingers and powerfully vomited out the water together with the breath that he had gathered in his lungs. <laughs> His throat was burning from inhaling the explosion scorching wind, and he couldn't stop the tears that were pouring down his face. His head felt like it had taken a direct hit from a fastball made of concrete, and his ears were filled with a high-pitched ringing. Hey, you alright? Get it together! He curled up in the muddy water. With his head in his hands, the man heard the voice of a comrade. At least his eardrums hadn't shattered. He felt himself being dragged out of the foxhole by both, by both arms. We gotta move. Temporary withdrawal. Can you walk? 
took all the man's efforts to nod his head. He couldn't see. His ears were barely functional, and his throat was on fire. He couldn't even speak. And he began to run his hands across the ground in a panic. His carbine knew what he was looking for. The man felt his rifle press back into his hands. Reassured by the familiar feel of his weapon, the man slugged it onto his shoulder. His hands still clutching the ground, he fled the place at a crawl. At thirty minutes past, the man came to himself. The rain had, ironically, enough finally stopped. His vision had largely recovered. When he looked around, he saw his companions, all just as filthy with mud. Hey, Shorty, you still alive? The sniper was still scurrying along the ground. That voice called to him. It belonged to a man who joined the army at the same time as him. They'd been in the same squad in their training days as well, and the black man was his closest friend in the platoon. His greeting was casual as always. Give me a break. Memory shouldered his beloved rifle and told his friend about the hand grenade accident. That voice from the next foxhole, the gr uh, grenade he handed over in response moments later of the explosion. The man angrily spat out his details of his brush with death through another stupidity. The black man listened in silence. When the story was over after a brief pause, he finally spoke. Huh? The hell are you talking about, Shorty? The black man said his story was impossible. Couldn't think of it, of course it was. The man was the unit's bird man, the rear guard, the end of the line. Usually the bird man watched 10 to 20 meters behind the squad. There was no way an ally would have been encamped only two or three meters from his position. Even considering his movements uh, to change his firing position, he couldn't have met anyone until the unit broke into retreat. I mean, let's say you're right, and some jackass dropped a grenade in his own foxhole. Okay, who was that? When well, the man looked around his surroundings, all eight of the squad's members were accounted for. A few were lightly wounded, but clearly uh, none of them had been on the receiving end of a grenade blast recently. So, who the hell did he give that grenade to? In response to his friend's words, a shiver ran down the man's spine. After rejoining the main force and completing his report, the man told his story to the grizzled veteran. The sergeant major had an explanation of sorts for him. A place is right around the site of an old battle where many Americans died. Among them were many who were, had been wounded cruelly, slowly butchered by guerrillas with spears and bayonets, and some of them had reached a grenade on their waist, pulled out the pin rather than be tortured to death. So in the end, he would take the man's grenade, perhaps a lingering spirit still clinging to the battlefield even in death. Who knows? Or so the story went. What do you think? Get a bit of a chill? <laughs> I loved the, the look on her face as he just like finishes his story and she's like, what is going on? Sorry about that, forget it. I think it's interesting though like how absolutely fucked up war is like that's that's a real reality for some people some people come back like absolutely broken like that's just that that's just a normal thing that we don't really talk about in society too much maybe in certain circles people that have experience with that um, probably have a lot of those kind of stories to tell just of, of crazy things happening on the battlefield it's like we just kind of ignored that history you know uh, Americans and, and the Japanese have that history, you know? <laughs> um, but nowadays we're, we're super chill and Americans are just like, hell yeah, anime. We love Japan. <laughs> My bad. Uh, that was a really dark story, but you can't say it wasn't kind of captivating. Got it. I'm gonna throw her empty juice box into her trash can and starts to patter away. Usually she leaves as quickly as she arrives. But uh, this time, after walking about three meters, Makina stops in the spawn and turns back to me. What? Damn, she's just gonna hit us with that after the story we just told? Life after death, hmm. Can't say for sure since I've never experienced it firsthand. If you believe in it, then maybe there is. In the army, there's probably a story about an afterlife exclusively for soldiers. I mean, there's Valhalla. I mean, is it different than that? It's a story you'll find in the armed forces of pretty much any country in pretty much identical form. If you believe an afterlife is waiting for you, it will be. I'm sure it's something like that. I 
would like to believe there, there's something after. I don't know about you guys. Like, I'm not gonna say you have to believe in something like that, but... I don't know, life seems too short to experience everything and just say, yeah, that was it, you know? Those where she runs off this time without looking back. I mean, some people just get screwed in life, too, and they don't really get an opportunity to, like, really experience much, you know? I'd like to think that there will be something afterwards in which people can... I don't know. Live live the, live out some things they didn't get to, to try in life. Like, I, I might never get to go to some of those cool countries that have different unique experiences i'd like an afterlife where maybe i'll get to get to see that or experience it in some way i don't think i said anything particularly interesting but hearing words of thanks naturally lightens my mood anyways drinking up the remaining oolong tea with a gulp i throw the empty cup in a trash bin and walk off towards our classroom for the sixth period class There's a subspecies of woman distinguished by an excessive kind of helpfulness, the burning desire to take care of other people's problems. Then a few days of entering this school, I had a rough idea that Suo Amane fit this busybody woman classification, but I have to admit I wasn't expecting her to extend her meddling to me quite so quickly. Well, I suppose it's inevitable to be running into each other a lot since we live in the same dorm. It seems like she's coming up to me every free moment of playing the big sister. <laughs> I wish she put herself in my shoes. It's not easy having to politely shoot her down every time. Not wasting any time, are you? I'm not sure how she got the idea in her head. Excuse me. Lately, every time a break begins, Amani's been clinging to me from behind. <laughs> Wait, what? And forcefully pressing her oversized lumps of breast blubber against me as if to say, Check it out! I'm the big tits character. The way they droop just a little is very popular with the enthusiasts. Look, you're heavy. Remove your chest flap from my head. <laughs> On the contrary, I'm something of a fan. I'm somewhat of an expert myself. <laughs> I prefer that. If a man hits on me, I can hit on him. With my fists. Uh, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> What do you want from me? If you have something to say, then spit it out already. The big sister, okay. Hmm. So we're called Onichan by Makina, so we're like the big brother. And then apparently we have a big sister of the class. Thanks sis, but I'm a big boy now, so can you please get lost? <laughs> Stop that. I'm a dainty little thing. I'll break more easily than you think. They say a snapping turtle won't release its prey from its bite, even if lightning strikes nearby. Mana is a similar beast. When she clings to me, my only release is the sound of the bell. This uh, woman kept a pet cat and positive would go bald from stress within a week. Not confident my own hair will be safe if I allow these assaults to continue. I think it's about time I get my message across, even if it requires taking a somewhat harsh attitude. Money, that's about enough. Just stepping into the shout, Sakaki appears with spectacular timing. Suo-san, Yumiko grimaces at Amani's response. Her glare is expressive. Aye, right, who are you supposed to be? あ、そうか。今日の日直私と牧野だ。イリスさん一人で準備を始めたけど、放っておいていいの？ごめん、ユージ君、私行かなきゃ。Oh no, bummer. finally released me. What a noisy woman. 
ネクラだってバレるのがそんなに怖いのかしら What do you mean? 言葉の通りよまあ昔の周防さんのように無駄にうじうじしているよりはマシだと思って私は諦めることにしたわ So she's changed in a way I think it sounds like you're familiar with her past Have you known him on that long? そうねと言っても知り合ってまだ1年程度だけれど I think a year is a good amount of time to get to know somebody. I mean, obviously, you can know somebody in a year, and then in another year, you can see them drastically change, especially when you're young. I mean, you change a lot、um, through middle school and high school, I think, just because you're kind of learning who you are. I mean, like, even not like personality wise, like physically, you're changing a lot, and then you add the The personality wise, you're still learning a lot of things. You're kind of learning your place in the world, what your interests are.、Uh, I feel like I definitely changed a lot as I grew up. So, I wasn't always like this. I just don't understand the woman. Why does she drape herself all over me like that? I did. This other day, having stocked up on the necessities for my new dorm life at the local supermarket, I was wandering leisurely around the area in front of the station. Don't call me that. Spare me. I can't get any cuter than I already am. Ooh, look at that confidence. All the other girls get jealous and start picking up on me. So you eemawashi. Dareka ni ni te rute y u r e n a i Like who? Da. So, do you need any? Okay, Mona? Bonnie pointed at the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand. Box tissue, ni condensi. Salada, brani, mayonnaise. Atoa, retorto, no care, ni dental fros. So, do you know what she? Look, you don't just start rifling through my bag. Care, you call Nara. Minami Guchi no sign, you're yori. You're as knowledgeable as always. Do you wander around comparing prices all day long? Hmm, she's got an impressive devotion to economizing. I felt、uh, definite admiration since my master was a sort of wild woman who bought things without even looking at the price tag. Okay. Well, I'm not that cut up on the price. I appreciate the thought. I just want a store that's convenient. It's all well and good to wander around looking for bargains, but when you consider the increased effort and consumption of time involved, getting too picky frequently turns into a loss. I mean, besides. Trips where I like go out of town to get to some specialty stores because I live in kind of a smaller town. I mean, my town in particular only has one grocery store and that's it. So if I want anything here, I gotta get it from there. But if I go the next town over, there's a few more options. I generally only shop at like maybe two stores, maybe go to the third every once in a while to get things I can't get the other two. But I usually go to one store that has deals, right? Um, So, I'll buy like things that are on sale there. And then I'll go to like, I don't know, Walmart or something. Because Walmart usually just generally has like a good price on things.、Um, but sometimes when you get things on sale, you can get them for a better deal at the other store. Just depends.、Mm-hmm. I-, I wouldn't say I grew up like dirt poor, but I didn't grow up with a lot of money. So, I definitely had to watch like what I spent where. Right, I'll be going. Yeah, I did finish my shopping. As soon as the words left her mouth, Amani was standing by my side, firmly grasping my hand. What do you think you're doing? This, of course. The demonstration had raised the hand that Amani had gripped, or rather captured, her fingers intertwined tightly with mine. What am I? A kid who won't go home unless Mama pulls him there? Gotta admit, I don't remember acting quite that adorably, so I'm very interested in where you're coming from here. 
Still gripping my right hand tightly, Amane raised the forefinger of her other hand against her lip and racked her brains for an answer. The, why do you want to roleplay that? It's roleplaying, I guess I have to play along, okay? Apparently Yuji's into that. <laughs> Did you really think I'd say that? Off. Okay, good, I was like... <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't seem like him. Horsely yanked my arm free, shaking off of Amani's grip. <laughs> if you think that puppy dog face will make me act nicer out of guilt, you're very wrong. Don't flirt in public, that's a role of mine. <laughs> Stop twisting my words. The point is, I can't think of a single reason why I should hold hands with you. It's not an answer to the question why you want to hold hands. <laughs> I like how she's subtly trying to make this. <laughs> kind of obsessive compulsive disorder. What sort of accident was it? I don't know if I believe you. Exactly. As she spoke, Amani took my hand for the second time. Joking, when did the joke start? Oh, this is irritating. Take the left at least. I can't calm down when someone's got a hold on my dominant hand. Why get friendly with me? That actually does sound like something he would do, yeah. Hard to say to that, but yeah, that was probably him calculating that friends weren't worth having. Wouldn't say I don't, I just don't understand your motive. You're a weird one. That is absolutely true. I'm going back. I moved to the left as requested, and Amani didn't mess around any further. On her way back, she calmly acted her age. Holding hands really did seem to be enough to satisfy her. Doubts did run through my head, considering it's only been a day since we met, she's bizarrely friendly. But still, as she is a member of our class full of special cases, despite her relatively normal facade, Amani must have her own unhappy circumstances. This hand holding may well have some meaning for her. で、彼女の過去を鑑みるに、スキンシップを無限に断るのも気が引けるので。うん、いや、なかびや。あみんひいす、プリティナイスウェンイトカムスとスキンシップを無限に断るのも気が引けるので。うん、いや、なかびや。
それが原因で心を病んでいるという話を聞いたことはあるけれど I thought you said you didn't know too much about it. it seems you seem to know more than you're putting on. t e o t s n a g i t a g a r u k s e g a r u n a n t a n a s i a k a b u n i s t e k i t a k o t o g a n a i a n I think、uh, for a lot of people, it's nice to know that somebody's nearby. Why was she so persistent about it? Dakara, Shiranaino, y o k o n o j o s h i r u k a r u y o d a s h i s o r e g a g a i n j a n a Does that eyesight make you want to hold hands? So, Shirukuga Mihatats n a k a m b o g a Nandemo Kuchini de Testa de Butaino Kajo Yondo Ninskis Runo to Nashte, Nandemo Savatemina to Chiska Nainja Naikashira. I am a believer that people do tend to do childish things because that's what they did as a child, and they kind of revert back to that to, to comfort them. Plausible theory, but I'm having a hard time buying in her case. In the first place, are her eyes that terrible? I think we're overthinking this a little bit. I'm sure we'll, we'll find out more, probably from her,、uh, about her past. At least my breath talking to you. <laughs> like, here's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Notice how he changes the way he talks. Now, now, some people do this unknowingly. I think he's doing it very willingly. He's, he's kind of matching her in a way. I guess that would be a good way to describe it. Like, he's kind of matching the, the tone of the person he talks to.、Uh, except for the last conversation with Makina, where he's telling her a war story. That was not quite matching her level. <laughs> so, that was a little bit funny to see her kind of get freaked out by that. But. A lot of the time, he does kind of try to match the energy of the person he's talking to. I guess we're done here. Or we would be if I hadn't just spotted Komine Sachi out of the corner of my eye. Sachi, do you have a minute? Hi, what do you mean? You know anything particular about Amani's past? No, I don't have any i n So, in other words, nobody knows the whole story. I don't have any fun and fun and fun. I don't have any fun and fun and fun. I don't have any fun and fun and fun and fun and fun and fun. いつまでもこんなところにはいないでしょうしね。Is Yumiko implying something here? Like everybody here is here for a reason because of something in their past that they're, they're trying to work through? Like, am I just reading, over reading into that? Or is that supposed to be like a hint at something? Because I don't feel like we quite know why everybody's here. This is very much a unique school, that's for sure. True enough. As long as the person in question doesn't want to discuss it, I suppose I shouldn't pry any further. In the first place, I'm a little dubious that Amane's past really has anything to do with holding my hand. I don't know. She's definitely like, attracted to us. Like, she's definitely put herself in a lot of situations, like changing in our room, that kind of thing. And、uh, storing stuff in our fridge, you know, so she has an excuse to kind of come see us. She's definitely asserted herself in our life. Taking things in a new direction, specifically, what do you think I did? Okay, now you're just having fun with this. Neither rings a bell. I have no memories of us being lovers in previous life either. That could certainly be it, too. We are the only guy in the school. So that, that's definitely putting us in a unique position. I think so.、Mm. Incidentally, Sachi, does that mean you've got an interest in holding hands and going on a date with me as well? <laughs> and I appreciate that kind of loyalty.、Mm. I see. Thank you for your valuable opinion. I'll file it under not helpful in the slightest. What, what do you mean? I thought that was really sweet that she said that. Like, if you, if you asked me to, I'd probably say yeah. 
Would she do that for any guy? I don't know. How about you, Sakaki? <laughs> right, got any interest? <laughs> uh, that's a Yumiko answer. Both both of these answers were very fitting to the characters that said them. Get the picture. Thanks so much for your compassion. So in the end, asking around didn't give me anything resembling a clear answer. But what Sakaki says, it doesn't seem like Amane wants to hold hands indiscriminately. Mystery's only deepened. Yeah, that sounds right. And that sort of life form? <laughs> Just at that moment, Amana enters the classroom, pulling Makina by the hand out, oblivious to our gossiping. Put my thumb towards the pair and their connected hands. Said Amani doesn't have a habit of holding hands, right? Sakaki watches Amani and Makina as she speaks. Suddenly, she clasps her hands together, struck by a burst of insight. For somebody in need of help? Say what? I've been put in the same category with this girl who looks about 12 and seems likely to get lost, tottering after a butterfly. What a seriously unpleasant thought. I appreciate that you're probably trying to help, but that's basically an indirect way of saying you look like a hopeless man. Sakaki, could you please stop rubbing salt in the wound without even realizing it? Kind of stings. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Mind answering one last question for me. Is there even a single normal person in this school? Hmm. You're surprisingly uh, aware of your surroundings, aren't you? True enough. Don't think you've got some special variety of unhappiness. Sensing the admonition underneath Sakaki's words, I feel the stirrings of something like shame. Whether it's normal or not, the student life isn't bad in its own way. Started to like this place enough to reach that conclusion. Well, I think with that being said, this is a great place to stop. I uh, actually got to spend a little bit of time with Amane there, I guess, at the end, if you want to call it that. We, we got a little bit of time with all the girls this episode. I really liked the uh, the flowing Soman. I think that was a, a nice scene. And a, a nice way to kind of have a group bonding moment, if, if you will. Uh, I, I liked a lot of the conversation. And we even got some more time with Makina, uh, who seems to be like my new favorite character, if you want to call her that. <laughs> I, I just like, I like that there's more to Makina than meets the eye. You know, she's like a, a transformer. And uh, I'm hoping that'll be kind of the case with all the girls. I, I hope all of them will get their own time to shine. As a, I think they all have something special or unique about them. Uh, definitely Yumiko's the coldest to us, but I think in a way she kind of respects us because maybe we kind of see things the same way sometimes. So hopefully that'll be nice getting to to know her better in the future. But I think overall this is a good episode. Uh, definitely a, a series I like to do about an hour and and call it good because there's. <laughs> There is a lot of stuff going on. A lot of dialogue. It's it's really rich dialogue too, which I like. And I don't want to take up too much time here at the end of the video talking about it, but I like how dense the dialogue is. It's not it's not super basic, it's not super simple. There's always something interesting going on in the conversation that uh that makes it worth reading. So, anyways guys, I'll end off the video here and we'll continue from from this point on next video. So I'll see you guys then.